So the first thing that I want to tell you is that interface matters. I don't know whether you guys love the voice that comes out of, of uh, the computer. I love it. I love it, right? So, so it, it is actually, uh, it's really good. I mean, it could have been much worse. That's what I'm saying. It's really good. And, uh, but also, you interact with it in the form of uh, question answers, and it responds to you in the, in the form of voice. To me, to me, interface is almost as important as the heavy lifting that any big data system can do. So don't forget interfaces. So how does it work? So answers in Jeopardy go, are, uh, uh, follow the standard either uh, uh, Zipkin distribution or uh, some exponential distribution, whatever it is. So the, so the clue in this is that when a question comes in, Watson analyzes the question, and we all know this for a fact that, that because given the kind of subtleties and other things that exist in Jeopardy questions, that the analysis of the question, what does the this refer to, has to be well understood. Watson then generates the hypotheses. These are some of the candidate answers. It gathers evidence around those candidate answers, which says, OK, is it, is it more likely to be Istanbul or more likely to be something else? Ankara, in this case, let's not take Sarajevo because it's not uh, in uh, uh, Turkey. And it, it weighs these kinds of evidences. And then after weighing the evidence, it combines, and it says, OK, Istanbul is the likely answer. So I want to illustrate a couple of points here, folks. Point number one is that the amount of data that Watson deals with is 200 million pages. Even if you give 10K to a page, okay, we're talking about two, three, five terabytes. I deal with clients who work on warehouses that are 100 times larger than this day in and day out. So what we have done as a community have, we have kind of really emphasized the macho-ness the big, in the big data is what's important. And I feel that if we continue to gravitate towards the big in the big data, which is sometimes important, forgetting that sometimes small data but big insights also makes a big difference, we'll be doing a disservice to the community. So my view is that in this overall journey around Hadoop and other things, size sometimes does not always matter. The second point that I want to make out here is that the world is full of unknowns. The world is full of unknowns. And more importantly, there is no right answer. Yes, there is a right answer in the case of what is 1 divided by 2, right? But in the case of 1 divided by 2, at least in our world, right? But there is no right answer for a lot of the questions that businesses ask. So the real trick is to, instead of trying to use the systems to focus on the exact right answer, how do you use the systems to actually give up, give the candidate answers and be able to weigh the candidate answers? That again is something that I see a lot in the enterprise clients that I deal with, that they're using big data techniques to not zero in on the right answers, but to kind of explore the space of the right answer. Okay. That brings me to the, the way we actually do the uh, evidence-based reasoning I've talked about. Let's do one more question. Classic literature for 1,000. I knew the answer to this, but I couldn't pronounce it, so I won't embarrass myself or, or you guys. Who is D'Artagnan? And how does it work? Right? You've got to pass what is the hero. You've got to understand what's the previous book. You've got to look at the previous book is likely to be Three Musketeers. Who was the hero in Three Musketeers? That was also mentioned. And the answer is whatever, however you pronounce that name. Right? Uh, clearly, that's why I'm impressed with Watson. Watson is able to do that, and I'm not able to do it. OK. 
So folks, I'm not going to uh, do any more, but what I'm just, just saying is, I'll just make one more point here. And that, that point is that there's been a lot of talk about AI and IA. And for those of you who don't uh, know what AI, of course, everybody knows. IA is, is the term uh, that some of the folks in cybernetics talked about, which was intelligence amplification. How do you use machines to actually improve human beings as opposed to use machines to replace human beings? And I think Watson, even though in this case kind of uh, it, uh, it, it beat uh, Ken and Brad, but really the users of big data and Watson-like technologies is all about how do you actually improve the life of a business as opposed to how do you automate something and then eliminate certain folks. Okay, the last point that I'll make is that all the sexiness, sexiness is an okay word in, in America, I wouldn't have used that in India, but for all that sexiness, right, of interaction, getting the answers back, buzzing in two seconds and others, we forget the fact that there's, a, there's an engine room in Watson, and that engine room runs Hadoop. It crunches through those 200 million documents, it parses them, it analyzes them, so that Watson appears extremely smart in front of everybody else, okay? So that is what is, Watson is powered by, requires the flexibility of big data, but it requires a lot more, and that is kind of a constant theme that I will talk about in the rest of my talk. Okay, so the entertainment worked out okay, now hopefully education and philosophy will also work out okay. So I've talked about all of this. I just want to say Watson, by the way, uses uh, about 30, 40,000 watts. The computer in our brain is 20 watts, okay? So again, it's about, in some ways, it's about brawn over brain. Big data techniques throw a lot to solve certain things. So it's about brawn, or what I like to call brainy brawn over brain. It's not about uh, replacing the brain. Okay. The other thing, of course, is as, as the opening speaker said, big data has become very big. So now I, I actually run into some very interesting parsing things because when we talk about big data talks, are we talking about big data talks or big data talks, et cetera, et cetera, because the fact is that big data has become very big. And if big data has become very big, then we want to ensure, we want to ensure that we act reliably as a community. So, Again, I'll use a term which is very popular in, in, in today's lingo, but I'll use it in a very, very different term, way. I'm not questioning Obama's birthplace, right? And I know that Hawaii is part of the US, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not going there. But think about birthers as the people who give birth to it. And I, I thought, what a weird term. But it's, it's part of the urban uh, slang, so I'm right. So birthers. The technology has been born, the big data technology has been born in the birther community on the left. This is what I call the technology creators, the parents, the birthers. The people on the right are the people who will adopt the technology, who are adopting the technology, where money will be made in the technology. And the question is, I'm going to walk you through in the next 10 minutes or so, our journey, IBM's journey through the right, and talk to you about what's happening in this community and what will, how do we ensure that, that the Venn diagram remains extremely high. So my initial hypothesis was, before I got into and, and started talking to clients and before Eric and, and Mike Olson and others kind of shaped my head after that, my initial hypothesis was that the folks on the left worry about macho things. The folks on the right worry about certain other things, right? Consumer-driven on the left, enterprise business processes on the right. 40,000 nodes on the left, I'm lucky if I get 100, 200 nodes on the right. Unstructured data on the left, all kinds of data on the right. So my hypothesis was, thank you, Yahoo, thank you, everybody else, thank you, duck cutting, now let's go and, and do something slightly different. I was wrong. 
I also thought that technology that's produced in open source is all well and good, but enterprises have their own cycle. Enterprises have to go through some of the questions that we have listed out there, which make enterprises think before jumping in. They've got to think about, okay, beyond kind of cool technology, what business problems are not getting solved? What business questions are not getting asked? And how does it relate to everything else that we do? So logic again says that the intersection should be low. But no, I'm wrong. I was wrong. It so turns out that enterprises are diving headlong into big data approaches. It's a well-known fact that analytics drives 5 to 6% of top line. I've done some analysis on it, and when you kind of do it and you realize this, then the cost of computation and storage behind it for a reasonable size business becomes almost irrelevant. Because of that fact, because of the plunging cost of storage and computation, because of all of these techniques, and because of the unmet needs within the enterprise, enterprises are diving headlong into big data techniques. The intersection is high. But, but we are also seeing a couple of other things. We are seeing this, this thing that big data for them, for our enterprises that we're dealing with, is not just Hadoop. Uh, one of the speakers in the video in the beginning talked about uh, streaming. There's a lot of desire to actually be able to apply the models, the questions that you want to be asked, apply them in more and more real time. So people are seeing that when the data are becoming bigger, that they want to actually take and apply some of those techniques in, 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 in streaming. So what we are finding is we have, we have started to talk about these three Vs, and, and some of you who are there in our event, we started to get on a uh, kind of a treadmill of whether it's three Vs or four Vs or five Vs. But nonetheless, the point I'm trying to make is that, that a lot of what we are dealing with deals with uh, volume. Bigness is important, but not the most important. Variety is extremely important, and velocity is also extremely important. And then this is true not just for the data, but for how people want to approach their analytical process. They want more discovery-driven things where they can iterate over various uh, capabilities so that they know what questions to ask rather than just kind of uh, go about in a kind of a blind way. So IBM has come about and, and built offerings to support the variety and volume through our Hadoop-based technologies and the velocity through our streaming technologies. And our clients are looking to both of these things to come together to solve their big data needs. But as was pointed out, we are finding the users of these kinds of technologies everywhere, everywhere. And I don't have to tell this to you, because you all know it. That's why you guys are here. But I have been surprised. I have been surprised. I actually helped give birth to, along with some other people here, IBM's warehousing technologies and others. So I'm, I'm a big fan of what structured process and structured data can do, but I've been surprised as to how eager enterprises have been in adopting the big data technologies because there's a class of problems that the class of solutions that we have built in the past haven't necessarily fully fulfilled. Okay? And this, this covers the whole gamut. You, you guys will have access to this presentation anyway, so I'm not going to kind of go through it. But these are not just pretty charts. These are real business problems that our clients are solving using big data techniques. But the point I want to make here is, again, that these, if you look at the mixture of variety of data, the volume of the data, and the velocity of the data, what we find is that these different, these different use cases run the whole gamut. If you look at the uh, kind of the green picture in this, you'll find that volume is important, but not necessarily the dominant factor. In fact, variety, being able to deal with more data and more flexibility with respect to the data, not presupposing the dimensions in which you're going to actually go and look at it, to me seems to be far more important fundamental principle than the bigness of the data. Okay? And that's why I think that we've got to kind of get away from calling ourselves the big data community I think that it is really about kind of a mixture of many of these things. 
So, so at time t equal to zero, then, as I said, given the variety, given the volume, given the unmet needs, given the wonderful job that uh, many of you have done in the past with IBM's help and other people's help, the, the enterprises are very excited about making use of it. But they've said, of course, of course, as I said, the core intersection is high. What had been built is useful, but other things are needed. I've pointed out on the right-hand side, as I said, streaming is needed. Our clients very rarely tell us, support our Hadoop installation and walk away. Our clients tell us, help us solve business problems. Remember that whole diagram about all the business problems that, that our clients are talking about. Our clients really look at IBM and other uh, companies to say, okay, how can you help us solve business problems? And part of it, part of it, is not just the scalability and the robustness of the Hadoop infrastructure, but how is it exploited? How do you run analytics on it? How do you build business solutions into it? How do you get data into it? How do you get data out of it, right? It is, it is that whole thing that helps them solve the business problem. And that's where the clients are talking to us about. And therefore, they are saying, give us analytics, give us streaming, okay, give us enterprise integration, give us solutions. Don't just talk to us about core Apache Hadoop. So that's where, that's where we're going. <coughs> so now I'm going to get a bit philosophical. So you saw entertainment. You saw a bit of education. It was education for me. Uh, smart people can change their opinions. So by that definition, I'm smart. I, uh, I had an opinion going in, and over the last uh, year or so, I have changed the opinion based on what IBM clients are asking us. Now I'm going to get a bit philosophical. Okay? It's okay for you guys, all of you, to stand up and clap when Eric says, we are strongly going to support the Apache community. It's a very good inspirational, aspirational, not inspirational. Eric is inspirational also, but aspirational statement to have. But the fact is, let's acknowledge that the, as a community, as the 1,600 people assembled here, the community is becoming bigger than what we even imagined we would be a few months and definitely a few years back. And because the community becomes bigger, now you start to get these kinds of tensions within the community. So what I've tried to highlight is that if you look at the birthers, and you look at the adopters, there are natural reasons why these things will kind of come apart. And by the way, don't worry, I'm going to give you the counter argument also. So but let me just kind of uh, stick with this argument for a minute. So if you look at the enterprise, uh, if you look at the, the birthers, let's, let's be honest about it, right? We are the birthers, I'm kind of putting myself in the V, even though perhaps I should be on the right-hand side, but let's, let's say that it's an engineering-driven culture. We love to talk about terms like data scientists. Woo, right? For us, it's a badge of honor that we are data scientists, we are engineers, we will build stuff, and then how it gets, you know, it's not, that's not the case. But yes, we really, really love to talk speeds and feeds and how complex uh, algorithms we can run and, and how we can do latent semantic indexing on, on, on big data and why data scientists and data scientists and data scientists and data scientists is the hottest job. Put the word scientist in anything, right? You're going to turn off the rest of the crowd. No, not the 1,600 of you, right? But the people that you'll go to to get money, right? So we have got this engineering culture that, will, that, will, that has the tendency of driving the birthers towards the left. And then we have this culture on the right-hand side that says, oh, okay, this is very exciting, but 
How does it fit into my enterprise standards? Scoop? Wow. Scoop? Is that the way I'm going to get it? Or I've got an ETL standard. I'm going to get that way. You guys are packaging Scoop. How does it kind of intersect with what I'm trying to do? Governance. OK, I'm really? I'm going to put all my data out there with no governance, no nothing? Anybody can go and do whatever they want associated with it? Warehousing, BI, we have invested billions of dollars on this. OK, now who is going to do what? What part of the problem goes on the warehousing side? What part of the problem goes on this side? Vendors could further cause some of this uh, thing to uh, spread out. We could, we could, vendors could, not IBM, vendors could, <laughs> right? Talk about alternative implementations. I'm interested in this API thing that uh, Eric is talking about, but alternative implementations is a very fast track to splintering. It is the Unix of the old time. And I think only one person benefited with all those Unix wars. One person, one organization, one company, right? Do we really want that to happen? Okay. So there are reasons, there are reasons why I am slightly nervous that this community will kind of uh, pull apart. But on the other hand, there are reasons to be optimistic about this. Okay? One of, the, one of the things that I find when I blog is that other people that I didn't know talk about things that I've been kind of thinking about. And somebody commented on my blog is that, that really what's going to happen is that with the kind of the social activity is becoming important for the enterprise, we'll push this uh, community to the left. And then with the, with the birthers growing up, they'll probably move to the right. We already know in Yahoo, for example, that warehouses exist. And how do they actually play with the rest of the information? So there is, there is hope that with the evolution of the enterprise, there's hope with the maturation of the birthers that the communities will actually come apart, uh, come together. The choice is ours. Do we as a community help bring it together? Or do we as a community actually accelerate it going up? Uh, I'm biased. I favor coming closer to drifting apart. So my, my perspective, IBM's perspective is, let's strengthen Apache Hadoop. By the way, Eric 14 didn't know what I'm going to talk about, so it's, 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 it's not uh, coordinated. Let's strengthen Apache Hadoop. Distros are fine, but let's, let's not have 10 distros. Eric, you'll have to answer. Mike, you'll have to answer. How does Cloudera and Hortonworks and others actually help bring cohesion to the community as opposed to uh, dividing it? And the second point that I'll make is that birthers and adopters need to become joint custodians of this. Okay? Which means there has to be give and take which means that needs of the many will always have to be more important than the needs of the few. I'm sounding like Spock, but that's not what I meant to be, right? And, and from my point of view, we in IBM, even though we are going after enterprise clients, we're adding our value add with respect to text analytics and solutions and, and streaming and other things. We are 100% committed with our big insights approach and all the products and all the capability that we bring to the market to actually these two core principles. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much. We have some time for questions, but uh, thank you again. My philosophy board, you guys. Yeah. What about, Hello, John. What about other vendors like EMC and NetApp? What's your advice for them? 
follow this page. Okay? I, I feel that we are at the stage in this enterprise adoption that we could... Oh, sorry, John, uh, that's uh, my mistake. John, John's question was, what's my advice to other uh, enterprise vendors? One thing that we learn in IBM is not to advise other enterprise vendors. So, <laughs> so, uh, so we, are, we are focused on what... Our, but anyway, okay. So, but, but again, this is about the community, and IBM is part of the community, Hortonworks is part of the community, Cloudera is part of the community, EMC is part of the community, NetApps is part of the community. The users of this are part of the community, Data Mirror, Kermosphere. I really want, my view is, let's rally around these two core principles. Yes. So the question is, will IBM continue its own uh, distribution? We are not in the distribution business. Uh, as I said, our clients don't look to us for us to provide Hadoop and get out of the way. Our clients look to us to actually solve the business problems. Okay. Now, in terms of some, some kind of transitions, there may be certain technologies that we are packaging in others but we are not in the distro business. Okay, guys. Uh, oh, there's a question there. Yeah, just one last question about the uh, variety you talked about in your presentation. Where yes. Could you elaborate more on that as to what is missing on Hadoop that probably would uh, enhance that for enterprises? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, so, so first of all, it's not missing in Hadoop. Hadoop is the reason, because people have this kind of problem about the variety of data and structured relational databases can handle variety but not handle it that well. That is why enterprises are looking at certain alternatives such as Hadoop. Okay, it's a variety that's driving this alternative. But I'll tell you this, right? And this I've kind of talked about in the past, that relational systems have built up this stack of dealing with structured data. And we go from this stack of taking care of all needs to what I would assert is basically a raw iron, which allows you to spray, shard, and mix and match. And I think there are a lot of other capabilities that will get built up over time to handle this kind of variety. Edge bases and Cassandras are examples of this. Lucene indexes, et cetera, are examples of this. These things will kind of get built up over time, but the fact is there's a pain within the enterprise to deal with unstructured, semi-structured, and polystructured data and that's why they're looking at these uh, Hadoop-like techniques. Okay, uh, I think that's, uh, we should let everybody go. I'm around, and I'll be very happy to answer any other questions. Thank you, folks, once again.